Hi, so I'm Nina. I run a company called Flip Turn and we run courses to he help people prepare for becoming parents. Um, and I've got David here today as a guest. Um, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, David, is mm -hmm. um, so in being good parents, it's, it's not something we can do in isolation. We really mm -hmm. need to have a strong community around us nowadays. Yeah, completely. And um, I'm aware that like since the 80s, I think David's been involved in all sorts of amazing community projects. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I guess I'm just interested in exploring the topic of like how we can sort of build ourselves a tribe or how we can create that mm. sense of community to support ourselves mm. um, in today's world. Yeah. Well, that brings to mind a story right from the early 1980s. Okay, great. Um, so I lived in a big block of flats, uh, huge, uh, four and a half kilometres of, uh, of um, streets in the sky, they, they called it, Kelvin Flats. I heard about that, yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, and I noticed, so I was a, you know, young, I, well obviously very, very young man, an activist and trying to find out what was going on and what, what I could offer to help improve things and obviously what I could learn. And I noticed lots of single parents playing with their kids or letting their kids play on the landings and getting to know them, um, I realised uh, some of their issues. So some of them was like they couldn't go shopping because their, their toddlers would be around their ankles and it was just very awkward mm. um, to do it. So we also discovered that there were lots of flats, because it was an unpopular estate, there were lots of flats that were empty. So we clubbed together and we petitioned the council to use an empty flat to do um, a shop, to run a shopper's crash ourselves. Nice. Now the first time we asked it, they turned us down, so we had to, to think about how to make it more formal and show them that we were organised and we could do it well. Um, and eventually they, they agreed. And, and that was really helpful and that was exactly what you're saying, that the parents clubbed together and were a, a kind of supportive tribe. Mm. Not, not necessarily because they liked each other, but sometimes they didn't. There was one parent who was frowned on by other parents because um, she was a sex worker. And um, they thought, well, some thought, if she's associated with us, then other parents aren't going to want to drop their kids off with us because we've got her on board. Yeah. Others didn't take that view, were more inclusive, and in the end, she did, um, I mean, she, at least for a while, she, she used the services. Mm. They, it wasn't without tensions, mm. but it was absolutely that feeling of, like, we, we need each other for mutual support, mm. and it worked for several years. We got some funding from community program scheme at the mm. time and uh, yeah, it, yeah it was great I mean I've since then much more recently I've had my own experience of needing support yeah I find it quite fascinating um, the fact that they called those tower box streets in the sky and there was actually kind of a sense of idealism around it mm. like, I think there was like kind of a utopian vision behind the there project was, yeah, yeah. and actually um, you know it, it didn't work out in that way that it I don't know what do you think the reasons were for that that it, it didn't really create a strong sense of community um the main reason is that it's it's, it's complicated the I think the main reason is that culturally in Britain uh, there's been a conservative idea of property ownership mm -hmm. that's the dominant idea so that if you can, it, almost everybody in society um, from the 1980s, 70s onwards, if you can have your own place mm. and buy it, uh, it's better than renting. Mm. Now in the continent where these ideas originated, so this particular block of flats was modelled on one designed by Le Corbusier, you know, a very okay. famous modernist architect, yeah. and the original block was, was in Marseille. Okay and um, the climate was different and the concrete didn't rot as fast in, the, in our wet conditions. Mm. But, but it goes back to this sense, in the continent, I'm losing my thread here, in the continent, people didn't have that distinction. It's fine to live in a rented apartment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a, um, a stigma attached to it. Yeah. So, um, 
that's the main thing. So what happens is the people with least choice and least mm. opportunity, and sometimes that goes with having the most problems or social needs, yeah. end up living together in one block. Mm. And people with lots of needs and if, depend on services if the services aren't as good as they might be or get withdrawn. Mm. And quite quickly, the whole estate yeah. starts to go downhill. Okay. And then people start to blame the building. Okay, actually, the, actually, the building was quite well designed. Okay. Compared to many blocks, uh, this had some really good ideas. The, mm. the, the, the landing areas, the streets, mm. were wide enough for people to play along mm. safely. Yeah. Um, it was a great place to meet people. Mm. You, you even had little services like the, the bin service or the milk floats. That were, they were designed of a certain size to fit in these little streets. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't all, it wasn't all bad. Yeah. That's and really fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of older people really chose to live there because the things that, that got them as they got older with their council mm. f uh, house is they couldn't maintain the gardens. Okay. And a lot of the older people were keen gardeners and it got them down yeah. to see their garden go to rack and ruin. Mm -hmm. So they welcomed moving into this new estate. Yeah. Um, so you got a spread of ages and that was a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So two two of my mm. best friends on the estate were people in their eighties, okay. who who were important as for the young children, young children to, to see them walking on the landing, yeah. and chat to them. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I did a project um, last year where I took groups of school children into the care home just round the corner from here, mm -hmm. actually, and that was really lovely. Like, I think for me, just to interact with people who were in their eighties and nineties. Mm. Was really lovely and just to kind of see the interaction between them mm. and younger children and how it kind of brought them to life um, yes yeah it's so it's so vital that's part people forget that that has to be part of the tribe mm -hmm. um, for, for yeah for me my my family my mum who's in her early 90s she lives 50 miles away mm. and i have to make the effort to get my daughter to, to see her, her see her gran. Yeah. Um, once, at least once a month, we try and go down. And my um, the other gran, my ex partner's mum, she's mm. in Holland, so she mm. only gets to see her once, sometimes the best twice a year. Okay. So we yeah. we do have to make our tribe around us, including yeah, older people. Absolutely, and I sort of feel like one of the obstacles um, is traffic. Like I, I read a study once, and it was about. Um, the fact that the more traffic that goes down a road, the, the less people tend to know their neighbours. Mm. And that there's something about just having that kind of immediate danger on our doorsteps that kind of keeps people in their houses. Yes, yeah, completely. Um, and I went to a really lovely presentation mm. a couple of years ago, and it was about these kind of eco-villages, um, again on the continent, where the cars are kept outside of the estate. And in the estate, you know, it's just kind of communal sort of grass, Mm. areas so it's it's really free for children to play and interact with each other yes where, where i live in barton hill um it, there was a big regeneration scheme for 10 years and one of the last things they did this was community at heart a new mm. deal for communities scheme under labor one of the last things they did was an, a thing called the urban park mm. and it's it's a typical reasonably good urban park area with, with swings and grass and mm. a few, few mature trees and the little fence between that park and the dog walkers uh, is crucial. Mm -hmm. We we all feel, all, all the parents in there feel safe, they feel safe from dog mess, that's another big issue. It's true, they yeah, dog, like, they feel like safe small from things like this make a difference. So, so we're relaxed, there's no cars mm. in there, no dog mess and we're much more relaxed in that space. Mm. It's not huge. But yeah. it's a Im really important space mm -hmm. on the estate. Yeah, and it's amazing how small things like that can make such a difference. Yes, that's actually. Right. And I, I interviewed some parents before Christmas just about kind of what they wish they'd known before they had a child, and also mm. what what they've struggled with. And for a lot of people, it's that sense of isolation. And actually, you know, just having kind of areas that are clean and safe from cars you know straight away you're providing somewhere that mm. people can go and connect with each other and kind of find mutual support that's right mm. yes it's it's an interesting thing that the, the urban park so i find think, think of having play structures there is that you don't have to 
you don't have to talk to people straight off and break the ice, which can be mm -hmm. awkward. In a, yeah. you, know, you meet face to face with some stranger. Mm -hmm. But when your toddler is playing with their toddler, yeah. uh, when their toddlers get interested in what your toddler's doing, or you're pushing toddlers on a swing mm -hmm. next to each other, and then you start smiling, and then maybe three or four times later, you've, you've noticed the people coming back. Mm -hmm. It becomes much easier to break yeah. the ice, doesn't it? Yeah, so that kind of consistency over time of yes, seeing right. the same people. Um, in your experience, what, what do you think creates community? Like, what, what do you think kind of strengthens Ooh. bonds between people? Um, seeing people mm. face to face uh, repeatedly. Yeah. It's critical. So mm. just noticing people on the way to the shops, down the street, mm. on the way to school, uh, repeated encounter. Yeah. So you, mm. you need to be able to see people and actually see them eye to eye mm. uh, and have a, a moment of recognition of mm. uh, here's another human being mm. over a period of time. Uh, sharing uh, amenities, doctor's surgery, schools, mm. corner shops, um, there's not many corner shops but you know they're, 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 they're significant still small yeah. supermarkets mm. yeah these are all the things that are important yeah. so I said what's to stop us uh, I think there's a couple of things that um, that I've been thinking about recently and there's a, um, a bloke called Charles Eisenstein who I really admire he wrote mm. a book called Sacred Economics and there are lots of really lovely ideas in that book about um, just how to restructure things so that we can kind of live better together. Mm. Um, and he talks about how joint creativity creates community, mm -hmm. but joint consumption doesn't. So it's kind of, we need to find ways that um, we're creating things together. So I guess whether that's in an artistic sense or in the sense of, you know, making spaces for children to play in. Um, yeah, and I, I know that mm. you've had a lot of community in our window with, um, you know, those little, what, so much foil, foil shiny metal, me, metallic paper used oh, these yeah. days. Mm -hmm. So I've cut them up into little squares, you know, paper for wrapping the butter yeah. or, or sh uh, chocolate wrappers and mm. uh, silver and gold. And, we, and we've cut it up in little squares and then we made a sign. Uh, about climate change mm, yeah. um, rather than being sort of scared and withdrawn over the, the yeah. impact of climate change we, we mm. said something like um, we're face, facing climate change with a, a smile I, I forget I've got the slogan we, we did yeah. but it's stuck in the window and people okay. notice it it's very noticeable yeah people nice. stop and have a look mm, great it's just a it's contribution to the issue and to to our neighbors yeah uh, uh, Zoe's, um, there's not that many children, a dozen or so down our street, mm -hmm. but I notice the older people really value having children. Yeah. They're, they're always asking after her mm -hmm. and smiling at us as we walk down and exchanging a few words. Mm -hmm. She's a very like important resident in the... In okay, the, and Zoe's so, she's so kind of open and friendly as well, yeah. that I imagine that really helps. It does. Yeah. Um, I've, I've often thought it'd be great to have a kind of adopt a granny scheme because my parents live kind of hundreds of miles mm. away and I, I feel like there must be older people who are longing to have a child in their life actually. Oh, and, completely. Yeah, it would be lovely to find a way to make those connections happen more. Yes, yeah, one of Zoe's uh, best friends is exact is that sort of person, mm. a woman who didn't have children her own. Yeah. Um, she was uh, one of my landladies, you know, where it's a process of separation. I, I lived in sort of lodgings over a few years here and yeah. here and there, mm -hmm. as you know. Um, and, what, and one of those ladies became uh, my friend, my good friend, mm -hmm. and took a keen interest in Zoe. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, she's like, she's almost that, you know. She's yeah, brilliant. She's like, really like, the, like, like, like the granny. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's several of them really in Zoe's mm. life, several older people. Yeah, I think we all need that. I think yeah. we all need people that are just, you know, maybe a couple of steps ahead of us in life just to, to be there compassionately and offer some encouragement. Yes. yes, it's knowing, you don't have to draw on the, call on them all the time, but it's knowing mm. that they're there. Yeah. It's a sense of reassurance. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. 
Definitely. Cool. Well, it's been a really interesting conversation. Um, so I'll post some links um, in the bottom about some of the things we've referenced. Um, David is a well-known jazz musician in Bristol, so I'll, I'll post some links to gigs and events that he's got coming up. Um, I'm offering an online course that's going to start next month, um, and I am also about to publish my book, Journey into Parenting. Um, please post um, comments or questions, we'd really love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you.